Good morning, Shavua Tov, a good Vach, and a good and Chodesh, Chodesh Tov. Today is Rosh Chodesh Nisan, uh, so please remember to uh, say Hallel today, Davin uh, uh, Musaf for Rosh Chodesh, uh, and for those who are accustomed to recite the paragraph of the Nasi, of uh, the donations that were brought by the heads of each tribe, uh, that's uh, found in the back of your Siddur uh, under the Torah readings for Hanukkah. See me if you'd like more details on that. We're talking about the Seder, and we got up to the point of Shulchan Orech, of uh, eating the meal. It's proper to eat the entire meal, says Kitzur Shulchan Orech, reclining. Customary to eat eggs, uh, and it's wise to use good judgment and not overeat, so you'll be able to eat the afikoman as required with appetite and not stuff it in, what they call an achila gasa, uh, stuffing like you stuff a goose. I think we touched on this a little bit before Shabbos. Uh, there's a lot to uh, eat and drink uh, as part of the mitzvahs, so... Uh, we take it easy on everything else. Roast meat should not be eaten on the two Seder nights, not even roast poultry. Even if it was boiled and then pot roasted, we don't eat it because we don't want to seem like we're eating an actual karban Pesach here outside of the temple. Some have the custom not to eat any food dipped in liquid on the Seder nights except the two required dipped foods so that it's clear that those two dippings are uh, the mitzvahs. Uh, after we complete the, the meal, we eat the afikoman to remind us of the paschal sacrifice, which was eaten at the end of the meal, uh, on a full stomach, the way of uh, free people. Yeah, uh, it's uh, appropriate, he says, to eat two kezayas, two uh, uh, olives worth. In other words, two uh, one-third pieces of a shmur matzah or two halves of a, uh, of a square matzah to remind us both uh, of the peso sacrifice and the matzah that was eaten together with it. At any way, uh, rate, you uh, sh- should eat not less than one and you should eat the afikomen while reclining. After you eat the afikomen, we don't eat anything else, so make sure you have your cup of tea, your compote, whatever you need. Uh, then you fill the third cup for birkat amazon. Make sure that it's clean. Uh, many people wash out, rinse out the cup, shvenkes uh, oiz, between uh, each, uh, each filling, uh, so there's no uh, leftover wine or crumbs or anything left in, the, in there. If it's not clean, wash it, rinse it. It's a mitzvah to make an effort to re- recite birkat amazon with a zimun, uh, however, this year, the situation being what it is, we'll be happy with what we can get. Uh, let's see, after Birkat after Amazon, you drink the third cup reclining and fill the fourth cup. Uh, that's the point where many of us, ourselves included, fill the cup of Eliyahu Hanavi. It's a custom to open the door uh, at this point to remind us that the night is a nine, uh, is a Leil Shimurim. It's a night of divine watching, and we're not afraid of anything. In the merit of our faith in God, may we be redeemed uh, once again and God will uh, exact his uh, wrath and vengeance on the nations uh, who treated us so poorly over these years. That's why we say, pour out your anger on the nations that don't yet know you. Uh, Then we continue with saying, uh, halal, lo lanu, not for us. Uh, Finish the rest of the halal. When we say hodu, uh, we we can uh, say that responsively as we do in shul, you'll remember. Uh, After the halal and uh, nishmas, we drink a full Reviews from the fourth cup and say the after bracha. There is a bracha uh, for after drinking just wine. Then we say the Haggadah to the end, uh, singing the songs that you sing that are your favorite uh, favorites from uh, uh, childhood or from uh, whenever you learned them. Uh, and, uh, and we are not supposed to drink any beverage except water, he says, after the fourth cup of wine. If you're not too sleepy, you can say shir hashirim after the Haggadah. It's printed in many versions of the Haggadah. Uh, it's customary not to say the bedtime Shema except for the section of Shema, just the Shema itself, and the bracha of Hamapil to indicate that this is in the, indeed, as we said, a night of uh, divine watching, a divine vigil is the way they translate it here, when God protects us from all evil and we need no further protection than that. A person who does not drink wine all year because it gives him or her discomfort, nevertheless, should make a special effort to drink the four cups as our rabbis of blessed memory recite about Rabbi Yehuda bar Rabbi Eli, who used to drink four cups of wine on Pesach and would have to keep his head wrapped, such a headache did it give him until Shavuos. However, such a person may dilute the wine with water, drink raisin wine, or drink mead if these are uh, national, uh, nationally uh, popular beverages, or of course, as we say, grape juice, certainly a person for whom alcohol is medically or otherwise indicated, uh, uh, contraindicated should not drink wine uh, under any circumstances. All right, so that takes us through the Seder. Uh, we have a couple of uh, conditional things to look at. We'll do that tomorrow, and we'll move on to talking about the laws of counting the Omer. So please join us for that then. Have a good day.